In today's video, we talk about if being a habitual caffeine drinker reduces the effectiveness of your pre-workout. Hey guys, what's going on? This is Paul Ravella from ProPhysique.com and it is the 1st of September, which means one thing and one thing only, MASS, the monthly application and strength sport is now available for download. If you're not already subscribed, then I would highly suggest it. I put a link below for you to, uh, to click on and go find out more about it, but it's basically written by three of the smartest guys you'd ever want to be around. They delve into the research that is applicable to the, what, what we do, the evidence-based approach to nutrition, to training, all the things that encompass what we do. And what they really do a good job of is digging through all the literature, picking out the research that's kind of relevant to what we're interested in. Then they break down the research, they explain the research methodologies, they discuss the findings, and they do something very cool. At the end of each article, they also give some feedback on future things that they'd like to see what would be beneficial. And so what I really like about mass for me is, you know, I don't always have time to dig through uh, research. I actually very rarely do that. I'm uh, friends with some very smart people who are doing it for a living. And so I get the benefit of that, but you don't always get that benefit. So I'm sharing this with you because mass is, um, it's giving back to the scientific community. It's going to drive more research in the future. So let's talk about what today's article means. So the idea behind the review that was done on this article was the idea that we all consume caffeine. Something like 90% of the people in the United States are habitual caffeine drinkers. That's you, drinking your coffee right now, drinking your Monster right now, taking your pre-workout. Caffeine is just a part of our daily lives. But does having caffeine as a part of your daily life impact the effectiveness of your pre-workout drink? You see. There's been a lot of research on caffeine. It's probably, along with creatine, one of the most well-researched supplements in the world, especially in the world of sports nutrition. So what we want to talk about today is, is having caffeine throughout the day negatively impacting the benefits of having caffeine in your pre-workout? See, caffeine in your pre-workout gives you extra focus, extra drive, it allows you to train harder, it kind of prevents that feeling of fatigue. So there's just a lot of good reasons to be having caffeine and I think most of us know this. And for those of us that are not supplement junkies, even just having a, a coffee pre-workout, it's gonna have some benefits, right? Now, pre-workouts are formulated with a lot of other things that has, have research behind them to kind of impact your training, your recovery, your intraset recovery, all the things that are going on while you train. But caffeine is just the one specific thing we're gonna talk about today. So, for, for those of you that like to have coffee throughout the day or have a couple caffeine drinks throughout the day, is that negatively impacting your workouts because you are a habitual coffee drinker, caffeine drinker, and so you're not getting that bang from your pre-workout. And uh, This isn't a commercial for bang, although I do, do love me some bang. I think my favorite flavor, mm, I like the fruit punch but probably the cotton candy. Anyway, so the pre-workout I use is by Core Nutritionals. It's called Core Fury Extreme, loaded with caffeine, loaded with stimulants, but also just a great overall product. And what I really like about that is it's kind of over and above what I normally get in my daily caffeine intake. So I'll have a cup of coffee in the morning. I'll have like a Diet Dr. Pepper here or there, a Diet Coke, you know, small bumps in caffeine. But when you get a really big boost of caffeine, I really feel it. I really notice the benefits of it. And that's what I want to talk about now. So in the research that was reviewed, they actually showed that there was no negative effects for being a habitual uh, caffeine drinker to the pre-workout caffeine, right? They did, however, postulate that it may become a problem if you become oversensitized to caffeine. And this is what I want to talk about, oversensitization. So for those of us that go through contest prep or through dieting, we can start to really, really heavily rely on caffeine to the point where we're kind of always on caffeine. When you're coming off caffeine, you're planning your next boost. And I myself have certainly, certainly been a victim of this because in contest prep, really you still have to function as a human being and caffeine just gives you that, that energy, that focus to continue your day. And then I've also been a victim of too much where I have a cup of coffee, no impact. Two cups of coffee, oh, I feel good. Two cups of coffee, no impact. 
three cups of coffee. Hey, I feel good. And it goes like that. And so what you start to do is just develop this tolerance to caffeine that when you go to the gym and you take your pre-workout, no feeling. So that's the one thing I really look for when I'm considering caffeine for myself. I try to minimize it when I don't need it. You see, I consider caffeine a bullet in the gun of fat loss, right? So when you fire these bullets out of the gun, you can't get them back. So when we're talking about reducing calories, adding cardio, caffeine is a bullet in the gun that allows us to be effective in our training and diet throughout the process. So the one thing I don't want to do in the, uh, in the improvement season before I start dieting is have my caffeine tolerance so high that I can't really use it in prep as a way or as a, in a diet as a way to kind of get through my days and use it on my lower energy days. So I will actually allow myself to feel down a little bit um, if necessary, just so I get that bump. So when I get in the gym, I'm able to crush things because training intensity is of the utmost importance at all times, but specifically when you're in a fat loss phase, you don't want to let that aspect of your process be compromised. So what I would highly suggest is that you download mass, you get a look at it, you review it. There's a bunch of other stuff in there. I'll put the table of contents right here for t this month's issue. This is six months in now. So if you haven't already heard about this, if you subscribe now to it, you can go back and look at six months of articles. I've done some videos. I try not to go too deep into these articles because hey, I want you to download it. I want these guys to get the, uh, the benefit of, of you purchasing it because they're putting a lot of their hard work into it. And um, there are three people that I hold in very high regard and Eric Holmes. Greg Knuckles and uh, Mike Zordos down at Florida Atlantic University. So they're just three great individuals doing a lot of cool things for the sport. And so go back, look at the last six months of the issue. And this month specifically, read the article on caffeine, how they used it with the cyclists, how they tested them. I think you'll find the, the research methodology is very interesting. I think that's the one thing whenever someone says, oh, you should do research. When you actually see how research is done and how difficult it is to perform, gives you a whole new level of respect for research. It's not that easy. That's going to be it for me today, guys. It's a very busy day. It's Friday here and Pro Physique is zooming. I got a lot of work to do today, so I'm going to get this video out to you guys. I want you to have an awesome weekend and I'll talk to you tomorrow.